Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how we can create this interactive 2D water with sprite shape in Unity. When our character interacts with it, we are creating waves and also if we try to submerge it, it's pushed to the top and floats. There are many ways we can approach creating interactive water. But in this case, I have decided to use sprite shape because I have not seen example using it and as you see in the video by using this method, we will be able to use it as a tool to create water very easily. To make our water interactive, the method we are going to use is by simulating spring movement. If you have researched or worked with water before, it might be very familiar. First, let's create a circle. I have put the Y position to 2 for this example, but we will not be needing it in the future as you see shortly. Then add a script to it, which we will call water spring. To make it move up and down like a spring, let's add couple of variables to it for velocity, force, height and target height and set all of them as zero. Next we have a water spring update function in which we are calculating the movement. For the height we will always be getting the y position which is our current position. Then to calculate how much we want to move we just subtract the current height from the target, in my case because the height is starting at 2 and the target height is 0. It is like our spring starts from the extended position and we're moving it downwards first. To actually move it, calculate the force step by having a stiffness multiplied by the result from our height. Also, having minus in front of the stiffness creates our spring effect. So when in our case the circle starts at 2 and goes to 0, then goes to minus 2 and then back at 0 and 2. So we have our spring effect. Then add everything to the velocity, which we are going to add to the current y position. Usually to execute our function we can put it in our update method. But because we are going to have multiple springs, let's create another script and call it water shape controller. Then inside fixed update we loop through the springs and call the function we just made. For this example we have only one spring that moves infinitely. Now let's make it so it actually stops after some time. Go to our spring update function and pass another variable to it, dampening, with which we are going to calculate how much to slow down our spring. We create a new variable called loss. Make our dampening negative because we are slowing down the movement of the spring and multiply it by the velocity. Then just add the loss variable to the force. That's it, now just go to the shape controller and create a dampening variable that we are passing. As we can see now, our spring is being slowed down in time. For the next example, let's add more springs and create a wave-like effect, where if we have impact on one of the springs, the rest will move accordingly after the impact. In the shape controller, let's create a new variable, spread, to calculate how the water splash should affect the springs around. Now create a function with which we are going to update the springs accordingly. The idea here is that we're looping between all the springs and calculating the velocity accordingly. For example, if we have a splash on our second spring to affect the left one, we subtract the height of both and multiply it by the spread and that's it. The only thing we need to consider here is the index of our springs so we don't go out of bounds. Then pass the function inside our fixed update. To create a splash at a specific spring, let's create a new function splash and pass the index and speed. We check if the spring actually exists, just in case, and then add the speed to the velocity of that spring. And now we have our wave animation. Next let's create our water. Because we're using sprite shape, first we need to install the package for it. So go to the package manager and get it from there. Then create a new game object for our water and that sprite shape renderer and sprite shape controller to it. If you have not used this before, basically it's a sprite that we can manipulate freely. To do that, click on the edit spline and you'll see multiple dots around our sprite. By moving them, we manipulate the shape of our sprite. We can also add or remove dots as well. Here what is important is to note that when we select a dot, a window appears with couple of options. For every dot, set the height for 0.1, which is the minimum. And for the tangent mode, set the first one, which is going to create these sharp edges, which is exactly what we need for the corners of the water. 
Of course, if you find something else more suiting in your case, you can always change that. But at least for the top two corners that interact as a water, it should be like that. The second option is if we want rounded corners and the third one is if you want one side to be rounded or the other side. To make things more clear, just play with them and you'll see for yourself. Now that we have this basic shape, let's create our wave points. In our water shape controller, add a couple of new variables. For the shape controller that we just created, how many waves do we want to have and the number of top corners that we have. It will always be two, of course, but we'll need it in multiple places later on, so that's why we create it here. Then make a new function that will create our waves. First, let's access the points in our shape. And the next part is not actually necessary, but I've made it so that if we have points between the two top corners, I would like to first remove them before creating the new ones. Then to have our wave separated at equal distance, let's get the full width between the top two corners and calculate what should be the spacing. After that, create a loop for the number of waves we would like to have. To add new points to our shape, we can use insert point at, which first accepts index, at which we would like our point to be created, and vector3 for the position. As you can see, we're always passing the corners count for the index. This is because the position of our shape starts from the bottom left corner, which is at position 0. The top left corner is at position 1, and the next point that will be next to it should be at position 2. So every time we insert a new point at position 2, every next point is being pushed with one index. That's why we're actually having our loop backwards, because we're inserting the points from last to first. It doesn't actually matter the way you do it, as long as it works. And then, as you can see, we just set the points we are creating that are not corners. So we give it as false and set the height variable to 0.1, as we did before. For now, just to test it, you can put this on start to see how it works. Now let's combine both our spring movement with the points of the sprite shape. Until now, we had the springs created manually, just to display the movement. So let's create them dynamically, like we do with the wave points. Make a new function, create springs, and pass as a parameter the spline from our sprite shape. You need to also make a for loop for all the point springs we want to create. When instantiating new wave point, let's have a parent game object inside our water shape that we are going to call wave points. This will do nothing else but hold our points in it. Then set the position of the point we just made by getting the spline point position from that same index. After that we are adding this to our spring list. Before we were doing it manually, but this time we do it after we instantiate it. We also need to have two more functions in our water spring. And one of them, as you can see, will be init, which we're calling every time we're creating our water point. Init we're passing the sprite shape controller, setting our variables to their default values. And very important here is to set our index, which we're going to be storing in our wave index variable. And the other function we need here is to actually animate the points in the spline we just created. Let's call it wave point update. And in it, we'll just set the position of our spline point for the specific index to be the same as our moving spring. Then call this function next to our spring update. As we can see, the points in our spline are moving the same way our springs are. But as you can notice, our waves are with pointy edges, which we would like to fix. First, next to setting the default values for our spline points, we are going to add another one that will change the tangent mode. As we saw before, for all the middle points, we are going to set them as continuous which will make our waves rounded. Then in the create springs function, we are going to call a new one that we call smoothen and pass the water spline and index. I actually found this script from one of the Unity's examples of sprite shape and the idea here is to calculate the tangents of the current point based on the previous and next point positions and then set them. I'll give a link to the description to all the materials that were helpful to me while doing my research for this tutorial. By doing that, now our waves have a nice rounded look. A lot of the times you would like to create the water in the editor itself, with all the points there, so you don't have to actually play the game to have them. So let's do that now. Above the water shape controller class, add execute always, which means we would like to execute the script while in editor mode as well. Also, add to the waves count a range slider just to make it easier for us when changing the number. Now instead of calling the function that creates the waves from start 
let's call it from on validate. This means every time we make a change to our wave number, on validate will be called. Here we are using coroutines. This is very important because before we create the new waves, we would like to remove the old points first. And to do that specifically in on validate, we cannot just call destroy. That's why we must use coroutines. Other than that, there is nothing else. Now when we slide, we can see our points being created accordingly. Next, let's make it so instead of having specific splash, we create a falling object, that when it collides with one of the points, it should do a splash. For that purpose, create a 2D collider for our wave points, and set the force send layers to nothing. This means that when our box hits the water, it will go through it and not stay on top of it like a normal ground. For the box that will hit the water, create a rigid body and a collider as well and add a tag to it that we will call falling object. Also, let's create a new script that will just push the box downwards with some kind of force. Now go to our water spring script and add onCollision enter to the function that will detect when the box collides with the spring. We do it by checking if the tag is our falling object. And if it is, we just add the velocity that our object is falling to the velocity of the spring. I have also created a new variable resistance to smooth out the impact. Currently it's only some static number, but you can make use of clamp function or anything else just to ensure that you have some minimum and maximum wave size, because we don't want our waves to go out of control if something hits them very hard. As we can see when the box falls and collides with the water spring, it creates a splash. What is left is to take care of the water itself, so when the object falls it doesn't just go through the water itself. And this is actually way easier than you might think. In our water shape add another component that is called buoyancy effector and also a polygon collider. Based on how you want the object to react to the water, you can set different values, for example how dense should the water be, or what is the surface of that water. You can also add dumping or flow of the water, so again just based on what your needs for your game are. Just by doing that our object can stay on the water and when submerged it will just go back to the surface. Well this was it guys, this video consists of 10 steps how to create an interactive 2D water with sprite shape. I hope you liked it, I will put all the materials I found from my research for this tutorial in the description and very soon I will release the full project in the git as well, so you can test the water yourself. If you have any ideas for future tutorials that you would like to see step by step or just maybe something completely different, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below. I would also really appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button because it helps me a lot, but even if you don't, thank you for watching and see you next time.